Hello and welcome to Crypt of Life Tales. Today I'm talking about the 1976 child chilla kidnapping. On July 15, 1976, 26 children and their bus driver were kidnapped in child chilla, California by armed men who blocked the highway around 4 p.m. that day. The students who were attending Dairyland Elementary School for summer school were being dropped off on their way back from a field trip at the Chowchilla Fairgrounds swimming pool. The kidnappers hit the bus in a drainage slow and drove the children and bus driver around in two vans for 11 hours, eventually taking them to a quarry in Livermore, California. There, the kidnappers imprisoned the victims inside a buried moving van with a small amount of food and water and a number of mattresses. So I've compiled some video clippings of the 1976 Child Chilla kidnappings to tell the story a little further. So check them out. It was the summer of 1976 when this bus pulled into the small town of Chowchilla, California. Inside the bus were 26 traumatized children. Outside were their frantic parents. These children had been through an unimaginable ordeal. Kidnapped and buried alive in an old moving truck that had been hidden beneath a rock quarry. Six-year-old Larry Park was one of those kids. This man carried me off the bus and he put me in my mom's arms. I felt, I felt like I was finally safe. 14 year old Michael Marshall and the bus driver piled up mattresses that were in the hole and after 16 hours in darkness, they managed to dig their way to safety. I'm giving it everything I got and all the kids are cheering me on, you know. Come on, Mike, you can do it, you can do it. Police immediately zeroed in on 24-year-old Fred Woods. He was the son of the man who owned the rock quarry and two of Fred Woods' friends, James and Richard Schoenfeld. Jill Klinge is an assistant district attorney in Alameda County. Fred Woods had keys to that quarry. Investigators executed a warrant to search Fred Woods' father's estate, and they found a treasure trove of evidence there. Now, the overwhelming evidence against them the three men were arrested. All came from well-off families who lived in some of San Francisco's nicest suburbs. Times said very little, no indication as to why this was done or what they intended to do. And uh, that's about where we are right now. The children were finally able to free themselves from the bunker, which had been stocked with food and ventilation fans. They found a quarry watchman who called police. A brief attempt to sneak out the quarry and hope the abductors would return as they had promised was dropped when word of the rescue was leaked. The kids were reported to be dirty, cold, and in many cases scantily dressed, but otherwise fine. All of them in fine shape. The medical people I have talked with that have examined them, and they say there are no injuries. At the time, Halchin said there were three suspects. Today, descriptions of two and the possible name of a third, Jerry McCune, were released. After the news conference, the sheriff's office permitted the filming of the children in the classroom where they were waiting for the return trip to Chowchilla. They had already been fed and checked by doctors, and many had been given jail coveralls to wear. Too big, but they did the job. The children were being taken over to another building one by one and interrogated carefully by officers to extract all the information possible. Many amused themselves while waiting by drawing or coloring. Only one or two slept. Attorney General Evel Younger was on the scene, offering whatever assistance he and his state agents could, but they were as baffled as anybody about the incident. About 1.45 a.m., the children and Ray, exhausted but anxious to be reunited with their families, were all loaded on a Greyhound bus for the two-and-a-half-hour trip to Chowchilla. They were initially escorted by a helicopter buzzing protectively overhead as they turned out of Santa Rita and headed down the highway to the valley. Shoulder here, shoulder. They're all some smiling, some tired, all very happy. Some of the children, weary from the near 36-hour ordeal, had a few smiles and grins. They were led inside the police station. Some of the smaller ones were carried off the bus. 
All 26 of those abducted Thursday afternoon stepped into crowds of cheers, including applause for the last one off, the school bus driver, 55-year-old Edward Ray, known affectionately by the youngsters as Edward. There was an anxious joy among the parents, but Miss Joanne Brown said she had felt optimistic all along about the safe return of her son and daughter. I really did. And the people that have been with us all until 2 o'clock this last night or this morning and all day long, they know that. I really believe that. We also talked with Bob Reynolds about word that his two daughters were found safe. It's, it's wonderful. I'm, you can't say there's enough words to, to you know, describe what, how it feels. You know, I, I, I'm just so happy I could cry. We visited the Reynolds family at their home shortly after the reunion. 13-year-old Judy and 9-year-old Becky say they were frightened by the abductors. How about you? Well, we, I was in a different bus than Becky, and I thought that it was going to kill her and Edward and everybody else that was in a different bus. Well, Edward was in the back of the bus with us. He was in the front with the man. At the time, well, you were quite frightened because you didn't know what they were going to do, and they didn't say anything. Did they say anything along the way? Yeah, uh, my bus, the van driver of mine, he acted real nice. He kept saying, oh, you guys are right back there and stuff. We had to get wet, wet in our pants. Did they offer you anything to eat? No. No, there was food in that hole. It's the only place. In this hole, you, what did you think this hole was? What did it appear to be? A sewer. Although frightened, they followed bus driver Edward Ray in digging out of the so-called bunker. Ray says after the long trip, they were lowered into the near subsurface building by ladder. It was covered with a steel plate, and dirt was piled on. Yeah, this building all lined with wire, big old mesh wire. And they stood on the outside, we hear them cutting the wires, and the ceiling started to cave in and everything else. We thought we were going to have it right then, but kept begging to let us out. So later in the afternoon there, we never did hear them cutting the wires or no more. So me and a couple of boys decided we'd better start digging. We was going to lose our lives there, same as getting if we dug ourselves out. The safe return of the youngsters relieved tensions of uncertainty and shock in the farming city of 5,000 residents. By sunup this morning, a peaceful atmosphere had also been restored over the community. However, still unsettled is a possible motive for the bizarre mass kidnap, but the resolution of that mystery will only be known when and if the kidnappers are found and arrested. Schoenfeld will soon be out of prison and on parole. He's 63 years old. His older brother Richard was released three years ago. News of the latest release did not go over well with Linda Labandera. She was one of the victims. I was kind of nauseous and then very tearful because first I think first of other children the children that were in the kidnapping itself and as well as children in the future Linda was nine years old when she and her three sisters were among the 26 children on that bus when it was hijacked they were herded into moving vans then hidden in a trailer buried in a rock quarry after 15 hours they dug their way out now a school teacher she's afraid the release sends the wrong message and fears it puts other children at risk how the laws affect them and um, other crimes that might be committed where people might think, oh, I'll just do, I'll probably just do 20, 20 years and I'll get my freedom again, no big deal. All three kidnappers were sentenced to life in prison. Two are out now, and it bothers her the third kidnapper, Fred Woods, has a parole hearing coming up soon and will likely be released as well. I think each of the men had 26, sentence, 26 life sentences, one for each child and um, they're not even to serve one. The bus the children were in still sits in a rural museum. Linda believes what happened to the children on that bus should never be forgotten. This was a huge event. It's probably the biggest crime to have happened to children in our nation ever. It was not a smooth drive down into the saloon, which had tall bamboo and brush. Everybody's crying. They're telling us to shut up or you know, we're going to get hurt. Just shut up. And we're waiting. What's going to happen now? And they back up this, uh, one van and fill that with half the students and then bring another van to fill up the other half. Their bus, hidden from view, Ed Ray and the 26 children were hustled into two hot and windowless vans and driven from the scene.
the mass kidnapping that would shock the world and put Chowchilla on the map. In an underground bunker along with 26 others, today parole officials once again denied the release of the last of the kidnappers, Frederick Woods. CBS 47's A.J. Woods sat A.J. Cotto, pardon me, sat down with Park and A.J. surprisingly he wants Woods to be released. Ken, this is an amazing story of forgiveness. Park was kidnapped, buried, and left traumatized. He held on to his anger most of his life, but has since found peace and would like to see the day Woods is set free. More than four decades later. When we stopped, masked men with guns jumped out. The memories just as vivid. And they got on the bus and they took us. Larry Park was only six when Frederick Woods and brothers Richard and James Schoenfeld kidnapped him along with a busload of 25 other children and driver near Chowchilla, burying them alive in an underground bunker, hoping for a $5 million ransom. Woods, the last still behind bars, denied parole for the 17th time Tuesday. Park still remembers every detail of the more than 24 hours of terror, held captive in a shelter which was slowly caving in. The sides of the moving man were buckling in, the top of the moving man was buckling in. Park says an older student saved their lives, digging for hours to freedom. And dirt just showered into the hole, and after all the dirt had come into the hole, there was sunlight that came in the hole, and it was it was magnificent. But Park says his family could not shake the trauma, crumbling afterwards while he spun into a life of pain and addiction before finding his faith and eventually his path. I let go of this bitterness and this hatred that I had toward the kidnappers and you know I realized that all of the bitterness and all of the hatred that I could ever hold for them wasn't punishing them, it was killing me. Park met all his captors in prison. The Schoenfelds released several years back. And this man, who says he spent his life a victim, now also free. That's not me anymore. I want you to know I am victorious over this crime. There are victims, there are survivors, and there are those who are victorious. Much with me was no longer in the bedroom across the hallway and was no longer there to help me through night terrors or dreams that I had. And I was so angry. And then you're going to subject me to losing my only sibling? Well, I just, I was an angry individual. I was an absolute mess. I made a lot of bad choices in life after that. I finally realized that if I was left on this earth after dealing with those things, I better get a grip on it and I better deal with it, and I better deal with it the best way that I could. Said ...after her kidnapper's parole hearing, but the reason may surprise you. Rebecca Daly was kidnapped at gunpoint 39 years ago, along with 25 other children and their bus driver. They were taken to a rock quarry, loaded into a moving van, and buried alive, held for ransom. But miraculously, after 16 hours, they escaped through a hole in the roof of the van. Now, unbelievably, Rebecca wants her kidnapper to go free. Don't ask me now. Three kidnappers, all from wealthy families. Two were recently paroled. But then, at the latest parole hearing for the third kidnapper, Frederick Woods, Rebecca shocked everyone when she asked for Woods to be freed. What made you change your mind? Because God told me to ask for closure. But was it a change of heart or something else? According to one of the victims, she was offered money by none other than a former sheriff's detective who helped put the kidnappers behind bars and was now working to get them out. I was um, really, really disappointed and shocked. Linda LaBandera, who was also a victim of the Chowchilla kidnapping plot when she was a child, says former Detective Dale Four was hired by the kidnappers' families to offer money in exchange for support at their parole hearings. He mentioned there was money to be made. I said, no, thank you. And he said, well, you know, those those kidnappers come from very wealthy families. Madera County District Attorney David Lynn. I've heard allegations that at least one of them is getting monthly or, you know, frequent deposits into her checking account. During the hearing, Rebecca said she did not receive any payments for her support, but did admit to being Woods' pen pal. There have been some allegations of... Oh, go ahead, keep your allegations and shut up! About it. Because this is the bus they were riding on 39 years ago when they were kidnapped at gunpoint and buried alive. It's just pain to be on the bus again. And 
to relive it. Inside Edition reunited the women, all victims of the infamous Chowchilla kidnapping. 26 children and their bus driver kidnapped in the biggest mass abduction in U.S. history. This is the first time the women have seen the bus since that fateful day in 1976. We found the bus stored in a dusty farm warehouse in Chowchilla, a quiet town in California's Central Valley. I was sitting in the very back. Jennifer Hyde and Darla Neal were both nine years old when they were kidnapped. Three masked men with shotguns abducted them and their friends as they were on their way to school. One of the guys came, had a shotgun pointed at my head. I didn't know if they were going to shoot us. I didn't know if they were going to kill us. The kidnappers, all from wealthy families, planned their sinister plot for 18 months, inspired by this scene in the Clint Eastwood classic, Dirty Harry. Where? Just get started. I'll tell you where. The kidnappers took the kids to a remote rock quarry 100 miles away. Then they locked them in a moving van and buried them there. For 16 long hours, the 26 children and their bus driver were buried alive, thinking they were all going to die together. The roof started to cave in, and um, some of the older kids had decided we were going to die trying to get out of it. Come on, let's go. This 1993 movie shows how they escaped when the hero bus driver stacked up mattresses so they could climb out of a hole in the roof. We're getting out. We're getting Get out. out. The kidnappers were quickly captured and sentenced to life in prison. Yes. But now, yeah. the victims again are reliving their terror from the past. Felt's brother, Richard, was deemed harmless and released in 2012 against the protests of the victims. Is there anything that you want to say to them? Yeah, I wish it well. We tracked down Richard Schoenfeld, living with his mother in an upscale neighborhood outside San Francisco. A lot of them have a lot of psychological Actually. scarring. A lot of yes, I, a lot of trauma. Heard. The third kidnapper is eligible for parole later this year. The victims say they still have nightmares about that dark day 39 years ago. I have to turn a night light on every day. When I lay down to go to bed, I have anxiety today. I have panic attacks. And in one final act of defiance, the women sign their names on the bus and leave messages for bus driver Ed Ray, who died in 2010. You will forever be my hero, says one. Another, God bless Ed Ray. Rebecca Daly says she will never be able to forget that horrible day on the bus. It took her childhood. Um, not every child gets buried alive. Oh, well, we were in the van, and I was felt lucky that I was in the van with Edward. And um, people were all over me, and they were peeing and stuff. And I said some colorful words for them to get off of me. And then Edward said, um, "Now you need to knock that off, Jody." And then I, I was like, "Oh no, he's he's going to tell my parents when we get home." And um, so that kind of gave me hope that I was going to see my parents again because he knew my parents. And so I thought, oh, I'm going to be in trouble because I said curse words. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh, okay. Um, oh, my grandpa would have loved it. He would have loved the people. He would have loved it being at the park here where all the kids, you know, my boys play baseball here. And, and um, he just loved it. It was a great day and we we're very honored that they thought of him today and we could do it on his 94th birthday today. That was new to us, yeah, yeah. The Edward, Day, yeah, it, that's phenomenal. That's super exciting, and every every year we can celebrate his birthday. He loves strawberry ice cream and cake, so maybe that's what we'll have today.